from Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. Operators are standing by. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Flash Friday. Headlights on across North America. Ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, you know what to do. Show them your cans. We flash you. You flash us. Show the loyal listeners of the Tom Likas Show that you are also loyal. Reward them for being devotees. That's right. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you need to do is call toll-free 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Valerie on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi. Hi. You're my adopted father. You are the father. You have taught me so much. I have to tell you, I um, have a 13-year-old son that... Um, I only started listening to your show about a year ago, and my boyfriend was very anti what you had to say. And I was fascinated because I thought you were funny, bright, of course. And I started really listening, and I came up with a program for my son that I think is very, very accurate to what you're saying. I told him in order to boost his grades, I gave him incentive, you know, if he... uh if he graduates with uh, with decent grades, I'm sending him to Europe for three months. Because I think the the uh, when I graduated, we all went and did the the rail pass the um, in Europe. Yes, and, with the hostels. We'd stay at the hostels, and we'd go to France and Germany, and so that was his first incentive. And then I basically have told him between twenty and thirty, men don't need to be solidly involved with a woman you know get your get the chutzpah out of your body go to college have fun in the dorms see the women you want to see experience what you need to experience so you can experience women learn what you need to learn about women on emotional and physical edges and then when you're about 30 if you want and if you're into that that's when you maybe want to start thinking about he should be working towards, progressively towards his career. You know, without a woman that is going to use him for a penny and use him. I'm, I'm a single mom, and I know what you think about them, but I've not. I divorced my husband um, of eight years, and I asked for nothing. And I actually was an at-home mom, so it wasn't an easy thing for me to do. The first year was pretty pathetic as far as getting my feet back on the ground but my son was there behind me the whole time we didn't really miss out on anything so i've told him if you stay with the program if you you know get the lays out of your system get get as much as you need and then fall in love if you want to have children and around 30 think about you know solidly having some kind of relationship but before that, don't even go there. And I told him because, I mean, I don't mean to use money against him, but there is a family trust. Um, and maybe he could actually inherit that money <laughs> and take care of his life. But not before 30 does he need to be married. 
And for God's sakes, don't have any children because that'll cut him out totally. I don't need this crap. I don't need, I don't want grandchildren running around that I'm having to take care of because maybe he's with a younger girl um, that is uh, maybe too, I don't know, using him. Well, that's generally what's going on there. Uh, well, ba babies are used as a way of holding boys into relationships they don't want to be in. And he's beautiful, and he's already, even at his young age, he's already got too many girlfriends. Um, and I, at this point, I'm, I'm trying to direct him that I don't know if sex is good at his age or not. But with the general census of what's going on in 8th and ninth and 10th grade... I'm assuming he's developing some sexuality, um, but I want him to develop the mental. You know, this like these girls are way ahead of the boys at this age, and I and I feel like sex for these kids is going to draw them into um, emotional. You know, well, mom, this and that. So I've told him this is the deal: have fun at college, get it out of your system. Even if it's got to be drugs, I mean, and I'm not behind that, but I do realize that college is, um, that's where you do your menages. That's where you do your your experimentations, in my Oh, is that where you do it? Well, that's where I did it. Oh, I guess I better stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the call. I appreciate that. Damn, I was supposed to stop doing that in college. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Dino on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Always a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, how's things at Paramount? You Are you it? kidding? This is, this is paradise working at Paramount. I'll tell you right now. I called you the first day you were there, and I asked if you uh, had a chance to go to the commissary. Have you had a chance to eat there yet? Oh, we've eaten at the commissary countless times. Great food, isn't it? Uh, do, do you work here? I I used to about uh, 15 years ago. Oh, okay. Well, the food is spectacular. And uh, we have so many listeners who work here at the Paramount lot. It's 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 a riot. Nice. It's a Are you kidding me? It's nuts. You know, we, we got all these friends here uh, 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 upstairs. Uh, Pat O'Brien works on the inside. He's right upstairs. And Pat and I uh, chat a bit online. Uh, and, uh, of course, we got Aaron over at the market, uh, the Water Tower Cafe. And uh, Aaron, uh, uh, you know, he's a big superstar himself over here. And then out of the front gate, Russell and Jesus, who uh, keep us safe back here behind that big gate over on Melrose. How about Dr. Feel? <laughs> Dr. Field, I we have not seen Dr. Field. His his offices are right down the hall on our floor. The, it, we mingle with some of the staff of the Dr. Field show. Yeah. Well, I called to uh to talk to you about wine. It turns out that uh, you and I were both in Santa Barbara the same weekend. I heard you talking about it when uh, we came back. My wife and I were up there. We did a little tasting. Yes. Um see it at a real nice bed and breakfast and i wanted to get uh your opinion on what you think of the santa barbara winery which uh, a, a specific it's actually winery? called the santa barbara winery i have not been there i uh, you know this one in santa barbara there are so actually. many wineries um have not been there i will tell you i will clue you in on a pinot noir that i had while i was up there called Dem demetria uh, there's a bunch of different Demetrius. We, we had the uh, winemaker on our weekend show, The Tasting Room. I actually told this winemaker about your Tasting Room show, and uh, he wasn't aware of it, but they are the oldest winery, and I had nothing to do with this winery. It's not a plug for them, but they were real nice. They took us back, gave us a tour, uh, showed us how they did everything, and it's really good wines. You should definitely check it out next time you go up there. Maybe have them on your show. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. It's real good stuff. Absolutely. One last question I wanted to ask you: uh, When is your uh, your store going to be up on your website? Because I see all these guys on eBay now bootlegging Leica 101 shirts, and I'd like to buy well, one. Well, as soon as soon as uh, soon as stations stop changing format on us, so we can get, get a breather here. Uh, yeah, about that time is when we'll start working on that. But uh, we've had a number of, uh, well, put it this way, there's been some management changes at the top here at uh, CBS, and uh, some format changes, and. 
changes, changes, and uh, so uh, we've had a the, we've had to mind uh, our knitting here uh, rather than sure. selling T-shirts. So I we, know, I hear it, but the one on eBay, the guy actually did a good job. I don't even know if you saw it. Well, one of the guys well once it. I find it, he'll be hearing from my attorney, whose yeah. name is Jill Petrini, over there at Manat Phelps. Uh, uh, if you are selling merchandise with my name on it or Likeus 101, hey, we love you having you as a fan, but this stuff uh, is uh, service marked which is uh, another word for trademarked, and uh, you'll be hearing from our attorneys. And we do comb through eBay and other places looking for people like you. And when we find you, you do hear from the wrath of God. So uh, okay, well, I, I know the folks at Manette, Phelps, and Phillips. They are they Yes, are yes, <laughs> yes. So if you are selling Like Us 101 or Flash Friday T-shirts, I recommend you stop now before we find you because we will find you. And you ask the people we have found <laughs> what happens when we catch you. Is there a good winery locally uh, in downtown? Somebody told me about a winery out there that I can maybe take the wife to do a little taste. Downtown L.A.? Yeah, somebody told me there's a winery. There's one winery that I know of in downtown L.A., and it's been there forever. Uh, it's the San Antonio Winery. That's what it is, yeah. yes. It is the one and only winery in downtown Los Angeles that I know of. Is it good? Uh, well, put it this way. The winery is is great as a place to visit. It's a great historical place. And they've got a fantastic wine shop where they sell wines from various producers. Having said that, San Antonio Winery is primarily a producer of what they call sacramental wines. Sure. Wines for churches. So uh, it, it, what is interesting about San Antonio Winery is, first of all, it's a, one of the few connections left to the history of downtown Los Angeles. Do you know downtown L.A. once had a little Italy? Really? And San Antonio winery was, uh, winery was in the center of it. And uh, most of it just got uh, knocked down uh, so they could build rail yards and stuff there. If you've ever been to that part of L.A., uh, there's a lot of train tracks down there. And right. a little Italy was uh, eliminated uh, by the uh, the construction of all these train tracks and rail yards and stuff like that. So San Antonio winery is one of the few remaining relics from that era. Uh, on top of that, they do have a great wine shop that's definitely worth visiting, and they have a bunch of seminars on wines. That's the first place I ever tasted a Bordeaux. Really? Yes. They had a Bordeaux tasting there. They don't make Bordeaux because you have to be in France to make Bordeaux, right. of course. But uh, I had tasted my first Bordeaux at the San Antonio Winery, and I went to several other uh, wine events there, Spanish wines and others. So it's definitely worth visiting. Well, thank you for the tip. I love the show. I've been a loyal listener for about 20 years and uh, love the, the Taste Room show. If, uh, if the listeners out there haven't listened to it in L.A., they should listen to it for sure. And uh, can you take me up African tribal style with a Latina at the end? Of course I can. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Latinos, you shut up! Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. I have a Flash Friday story that I think you're going to love. Yeah? I saw a Flash Friday sign, so of course, up goes my shirt, and then I realized there's a cop, like three cars behind him. Uh huh. So I'm thinking, oh God, and then the cop flashes his lights at me and waves. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you something, the cops love our show, <laughs> and they love being flashed. All they wish is that uh, women weren't afraid of getting arrested, because what guy would arrest a woman for showing her breast to her? I mean, <laughs> come on. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. 97.1. KLSX. Free FM. The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Flash Friday, wide open telephones. And we continue with Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Pretty good. Hey, bud, I'm looking for some advice, and I could, the only person I could think of is the professor. Before you ask me, do you already know what my answer is going to be? Uh, you don't on this one? I really don't. I have an idea of what you're going to say, but it's All kind right. of a tricky situation, you know? All right. 
All right. Been dating a girl for about three and a half years. Um, it's getting to that stage where she, she's definitely ready to uh, settle down, to take the plunge. You know, she's, she's pushing hard to get married. Um, she doesn't want to sign a prenup. Now, normally, I would run for the hills and, you know, not think twice about it. Um, she's an educated girl. She's smart, and she comes from a lot of money. She stands to inherit a, a lot of money here in a couple of years. Her father is a majority holder of, of a bank in the Midwest. So it's kind of a catch-20. You know, what do you do? You, well, you, first you, of all, we don't know that she will get that money uh, before the end of your marriage. And that, Right. Right, that, that, that is absolutely correct. That's and secondly, I remember in. I'm not an attorney, but my understanding about inheritances is that, is that they are different from regular income. And it's possible, and again, I'm not an attorney, and I encourage you to check with an attorney to find out. But um, it's my belief that uh, uh, inheritances are untouchable by you. Now, with it... Is not an actual inheritance. It, I guess more or less it, it would be a gift. When he sells his banks, his, he has three daughters. He's going to give each daughter a, you a need share. You need to check it with an attorney. Okay. Don't be a cheapskate. No, it, it has. I mean, I have no problem paying the five grand to, to you know get with an attorney. It wouldn't cost you five grand. This is, this is why people don't go to attorneys. They think everything's five grand when they go to an attorney. Now, how much this would cost you an attorney? One hour of time. So whatever they charge per hour, that's probably what it would take. Okay. So well, at most, it would probably cost, what, 750 bucks. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's not a bad investment to get the proper information. That's right. So I guess, you know, without talking to an attorney, obviously, I don't need to make any actions. Um, you know, I, it, there's a lot of, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm kind of kind of lost on this one so i was hoping to well get that's from you. i'm telling well first of all i wouldn't get married without a prenup even if the other person had more money than i and what's the reason for that uh because uh, first of all uh, i i'm convinced that i'm not a loser um i have been with people in the past who made more money than i did and now i i can buy and sell those people all right no nor am i convinced i'm a loser in any way well that's my point how do you know you won't one day own a bank well, it's not that I don't know that. I, well, I won't own a bank because that's not the path that I'm going to follow. Well, whatever. Um, How do you know you won't own a big business or make lots and lots of money? How do you know you won't win Powerball and have $100 million? Well, I guess there really is no way to know. Right. Yeah. And most of the people we talk to, they say, oh, we don't need a freedom. We don't have anything. And then they find out later. Did you hear that story we read on the air about the two people who came from Russia? No, I didn't. And the guy got into the oil business. They were married when they were in Russia. They came here. The guy got into the oil business, and the woman got like a two hundred million or a three hundred million dollar settlement in the divorce. All right. You hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. I mean, I guess the only reason why I was ever doubting is that we're both coming in, and we we she makes about five thousand dollars more a year than I do. Um, we're both coming in with. But that doesn't mean what? How much you make today is irrelevant. Does she want to have children? Yes. So is she going to work full time when she's got a kid? Answer, no. Then you'll be making more than she does. Well, Pay no planning, attention to what's happening today. The plan in place is when it is time to have children. That I don't care you. what the plan is in place. Once she is free to quit or to cut back her hours, or once she finds out how hard it is to raise a child and also work full time, you're going to find out the hard way. Right. All right, Tom. I mean, how's she going to do this? She going to make you stay home and take care of the kid? No, absolutely not. How do you know? Why? How is this going to be taken care of? When she has a kid, who's taking care of the kid? Well, like I was saying, the, the plan is that she would, obviously, towards the end of her pregnancy, take some time off to, you know, for maternity leave. Um, and and um, then the kid will need to be taken care of. Who's doing it? A uh, higher daycare. Uh-huh. And how much is that? What's that? How much is that? It couldn't be more than $1,000 a week. How much does she make? Uh, right now, her salary is about ninety k. Ninety k is less than $2,000 a week. Right. Mm -hmm. with, my, with my combined income. All right. So. Well, if I were you, I'd be skipping on down to the attorney's office. Okay. Because I'm telling you, as much as you say this can't happen, uh, it'll never happen, that's famous last words. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. I'm not saying can't or never. I'm just, 
I'm looking at it the aspect of she's coming in with equal assets and, you know, but I, I guess you're absolutely right. You never know what's going to happen. You know, she could decide once she has a kid and she's married that up. She doesn't want to work anymore and she just wants to stay home and play mommy. That could happen. So, all right. And who do you think would pay if the marriage didn't survive? And by the way, you know, many of these marriages go down the drain when the kid is born and, and it becomes so stressful around the house. And that's exactly when you're going to become vulnerable to paying. Right. Also, what happens if you get divorced before she gets that gift you're talking about? Well, if we get divorced before that, I mean, I guess it's it's no worse for wear. Like I said, we're both coming in. We own equal values of property. Um, we're no, no. Both... We're not talking about community property. I'm talking about alimony. Right. Well, I, from what I understand, I mean, I could be Let wrong. Let me give you a scenario. I can tell you right now. Okay? Yes. You're both married. You have a kid. She decides she's going to quit for a few months. And that few months is like kind of undefined. Like she's going to quit and she'll go back when she's ready. She'll go back when the kid is ready. She'll go blah, 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 blah. All right. right. She's home. The kid is crying. She's not sleeping. The two of you are fighting and you break up. All right. Before she receives a gift from her father. Now, you're employed. She's not. All right. Right? Uh, what happens with alimony then? I suppose I would be paying. That's that my point. That's my point. All right. So you're saying no matter what circumstances, um, I mean, no pre, you know. Without I wouldn't get married without a prenup unless, unless you're marrying Paris Hilton. Now, let me ask you this. Would it be wise... And, and again, I know you've talked about you know, post ups on this program. No, times. no, 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 no. Post ups are still new, and we don't know if they will stand up. Why? You're not married yet. Right. You can get a prenup. A post up is when you screwed up and didn't get a prenup. Don't be okay. planning on a post up. Okay. You have to have some balls here. You have to stand up. Oh, well, it, it's not about having balls. It's it's looking for, you know, if something does go wrong in the future, what's going to put me in the best position? You know, it's it has nothing. To, I have no problem with a prenup. I'm completely 100% yeah, okay. But, it, well, even if she gets a gift from her father. I no, don't you have to man. say, I, well, I, don't you have the balls to say, I'm not getting married without a prenup? Oh, absolutely. She knows how I feel about and it. And that means you might not get married. So that's, uh, I mean, that, that that's where it stands, and that's where the... Uh, the question comes into place. Her standpoint is obviously we both make the same amount of money. We're but, coming in with well, the, I, her standpoint is ill-informed because how much you make today is irrelevant. It's how much you make the day you get divorced, not the day you get married. Right. How yeah. much you make today is irrelevant. When I was 18 years old, I got married. Uh -huh. Okay? I was making $20,000 a year doing Glengarry Glen Ross. I was on the phone. I would always be closing. I literally did that job, okay? Calling people on the phone and selling real estate on the phone. Uh, my ex also made $20,000 a year. Now, if you said to me at the time, get a prenup, I'd say, what do I need it for? We both make $20,000 a year. What do you need it for? Well, the fact is, today, my first wife is on disability, and I have a seven-figure income. Who could have foreseen that when we were both on the phone asking people to come up to the Poconos and look at real estate? If we stayed married all this time, I would be paying for the rest of my life. Hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So I guess my question uh, to that would be, obviously you're talking about the alimony and the potential risk of that. Now, don't you have to be married for 10 years before you're set in for alimony? Well, I would have been married 10 years by now if I was still, if I had stayed married to her. Right. But by the same token, to pay alimony forever, you have to be married for 10 years. Do you want to pay it for four and a half years after being married nine years? Four years after being married eight years? Three and a half years after being married seven years? No, of course not. That's my point. Okay. 
My last two prenups said I won't pay spousal support under any circumstances. You know I won't pay it, and you, know, you understand I'm not getting married if I if you expect me to pay it. Now, again, I understand you're not a lawyer. Um, can you, I mean, obviously a prenup is what two people come in and equal to, uh, you know, in agreement without any outside pressure. Can we both state that in the prenup that we will not pay any, you know, support or alimony in any way in either direction, about however, whatever they're asking? All I can tell you is what I was advised. I, I had that in my prenup. Okay. That we, neither one of us would pay uh, spousal support. Right. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Yeah, and if you do me a favor, boy. By the way, she's a fool if she's going to have all that money because you want to know something else. If you got hit by a bus. Right. And you couldn't perform in the sack anymore and she wanted to divorce you and she had a $5 million gift from her father, she'd have to pay you. That That is why I'm saying, should I get a prenup? No, that's, but that's, that's I'm just telling you, she's a fool for saying no. But 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 you also, because you don't know what you're going to accomplish, you would be crazy to get married without one. Absolutely. And I, I understand that. The whole point of the question was exactly what you just said. Is Why? If there is a situation where this does come through and this does come into place and something does happen to the marriage. And I, I, I told her this. I said, look, it's crazy to get married without, the, you know, without a prenup for your assets, for your protection. What happens if you do get this gift and things don't work out? It hurts. I don't care. That's fine. You know, it's. I'll pay you your just due. Well, I would certainly say no to that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. I had a girl ask me the, the typical, what am I to do? And I go, what are my options? And she says, well, you can be my fiance, uh, my girlfriend, my ass buddy. And I go... Uh, I think you're my ass buddy, so get the ass out. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1. KLSX. Free FM. From a lot of Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Flash Friday. And uh, DJ DeBilio answering the phones diligently, diligently out there. And uh, we would uh, certainly love to hear from you. So here we go. Nick in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, yeah, I wanted to call up because uh, I've got a success story. Uh, I married a woman uh, last year when I was 21, and she's a single mother. Uh, never met her kid, and for about uh, a week after we got married, I realized that I made a huge mistake, and I, about uh, two months ago, I got a chance to get out of the situation, and I jumped on it, and uh, it was, she actually was going to go down to Texas with her daughter, and so what I did is uh, I had actually started listening to you about three weeks before she was going to go, <clears throat> and then when the time came, I said, uh, the day before she left, I said, we're through. It was a perfect extra strategy. And uh, you really gave me the confidence to go ahead and make that move. I love that. So, uh, uh, thank you. So did you get the divorce? Uh, actually, I've just sent her the papers. Um, and the divorce is not finalized, but uh, it's, we're working on it. So Good for you. What made yeah. you feel like you needed to get married to a single mother? Well, um, I was pussy with, to be totally honest with you. There's not much else I could say. Um, she was, uh, she gave me some great sex, and I pretty much just fell in love with her. And I was I wasn't experienced enough to really see what else was out there. I just kind of said, "Okay, well, this sounds good. It's working, now, so I'll go for it." Wow. But, uh, yeah, it was a big learning experience, to say the least. I so, bet it was. Now, had you been a listener before that or after that? I, uh, I had not. Um, so, like I said, three weeks before she left, I started listening to you, and you know, that had kind of pumped me up enough to um, tell her that it was over by the time she was uh, ready to leave. So, and she's still down there, and I'm really fortunate for that. Wow! I really don't want to see that. Can't say that on the air, Nick, and you know oh, you can't oh, say that oh, on the air. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. Um, so, another reason I was calling is. Um, I work kind of weird hours. I work uh, three to one, and I have uh, 
Tuesday and Wednesday off, so I have a hard time finding chicks um, because I don't really go out to the bar on Tuesday and Wednesday. There's not a whole lot of action going on. So I wanted to ask you what your best advice is for picking up chicks just on the street, just, you know. Well, in Bork Borkland is full of those uh, brew pubs. Yeah. So you don't have to go to just clubs, you know. Uh, brew pubs, coffee houses, and the like. There's uh, chicks in all those places. Um, we used to particularly like that Kennedy School. I, I've been there many times. I like that place. Yeah. I mean, they look like there was some talent in the air. All right. Um, and as far as, you know, I mean, I can pick up chicks are all liquored up and everything, but if that's, that's my biggest question is when they're not all drunk, how do I, you know, how do I come off and as not being too much still? Uh, you you want to be an a-hole. You, you want to be one. So I can just. Just even like, it really, I don't. I'm you sorry, you can't man. say I'm, these words on the air. You can't. The D word, the F word, I, the A, the AH I'm, word. You can't be doing it. You I'm can't. Sorry. It just sounds like I'm just talking to you. I yeah, but you're not. Again. We're on a radio show in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Okay, sorry. Okay. Federally licensed broadcast facilities. Okay. All right. My All right. So, yes, why are you worried about coming up like an a-hole? That's exactly what you need to do. You come from the most matriarchal part of America. You know, where women, where, where women spell the word women, W-O-M-Y-N. Are you kidding me? It's like, it's not an accident. There's so many strip clubs in Portland. Oh, this is true. There's many good ones. Okay, so uh, basically just be a jerk during the day. Be a jerk and... all the time with women. Be a jerk. Okay. That's what they respond to. But, uh, okay. Well, I'm, uh, and in Portland, they're all fertile myrtles there, so you have to make sure you're always using a condom. I will, Tom. That's, Got it? Uh, There's a retro term. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so uh, always with the condoms, because uh, those girls, I, I don't think there's a girl in, in the Pacific Northwest who would mind getting knocked up. Oh, that's a scary thought, man. Well, think about it. But where'd you get that idea? Because I, because, mean, because, because we spent a lot of time in the Pacific Northwest, a lot, and we, uh, we nailed a bunch of chicks there. Oh, awesome! Hey, and I know what they're like. All right. Well, uh, hey, uh, uh, thanks for the advice. I will continue being the biggest jerk I can be, and uh, I'll let you know how that goes. Thank you, Dick. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Hans on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Well, I called you about three years ago and told you I was going to marry an 18-year-old, and you called me Poindexter and more or less hung up on me. Well, 14 months later, I called you the day after I got divorced. Wow, this has been three years now, and it's the first time I've seen my ex-wife today um, in two and a half years, and I... I looked at her, and I looked away. Why would she come out after me? I, I just don't understand that. I'm screwed up here. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't say anything to her, and she's like, Hans? Hans? And I, I just looked at my truck, and I'm like, please go away. Who cares? Like, like, like so uh, who cares what her motivation is? Only somebody who's considering getting back with somebody would worry about that. No, I'm not. I went through a nasty divorce. Is it because there wasn't like no, no, um, what's the term, um, um, no ending to it? Because we didn't talk or nothing after we got divorced. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, you have to understand. I don't think like you. Oh. When somebody is gone, I don't know or care why they're gone. Yeah. Well, I don't. I, I, me too, but I just seen her today. It felt like she just ripped my heart out again. Well, well that's because you allowed it. Hmm. Very interesting. I mean, that if you didn't worry about it, <laughs> she couldn't do it. No, that's true. That's you true. made yourself vulnerable. Yes, I did. Stop yeah. worrying about this chick. Really? It ended for a reason. All okay. right. Well, can you take me out GSK Junior style because I'm a pussy whipped? <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Joe on the Tom Like His Show. Hey 
Tom. Uh, I got a situation. Uh, I know uh, I know this friend of mine. We've been knowing each other since junior high. And this guy, like, he gets all the chicks all the time. I mean, the guy's a little bit overweight, but he's, he's I mean, his face is all right. And me, I'm a skinny. I mean, I'm not that bad looking because I've had chicks before. But the problem is, I mean, I got a good car and stuff like that. So, I mean, my friend ha- sometimes doesn't have any money. And, I mean, I'll go out with chicks, but to make them laugh and everything. And, I mean, the thing is, he tells me, you don't know how to seal the deal. I mean, what do I have to to basically seal that deal. Treat him like crap. Because, well, I mean, we caught one time, and this one chick that he knew, like, back in high school, wanted to get with him. The first night, he said, I'm going, you know, I'm going to be leaving. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, but he had a history there. I mean, it's not like he met somebody at random. Well, well I mean, uh, chicks. I mean, other chicks we've gone out cruising or to, like, the clubs and ran. He just he doesn't even know the chick, and he gets laid. It's like, damn, how does he? Do well, that? again, uh, I, my opinion is that you have to treat chicks like crap. Uh, making them laugh and spending time cheering them up and whatever is, is not the way to do it. Right. So I, then you then you uh, look like friend material, not sex material. Right. So so I mean, how would I mean? I'll make a person laugh. I mean, how would I? Turn around the table and let them know that I'm um, I'm in the driver's seat. You're in the driver's seat, first of all, by acting like you couldn't care less if they were there or not. Right. Right. Because, I mean, this guy's just, he slept with so many chicks, and I might have a little bit of envy towards him, even though I know the guy from, like, seventh grade. But it's like, damn, how the hell do you do it? I mean, chicks just go up to him. I'm not saying he's a god, you know, gift to women, but he has luck. I mean, this guy... No, I don't think it's about luck. No? Nope. Mm, it's just the way you approach chicks and yep. how you dress? Well, I or... treat chicks like I couldn't care less if they were talking to me or not. Right. Right. So, like, you talk to this guy, Nick, from Oregon. Turn around the table, does he be more of an a-hole? Of course! Mm. Nice guys don't get laid. Yeah, that's that's nice pretty, guys finish last. Yeah, that's pretty damn true. That's what's happening. Oh, man. I, 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 you know what? I've been doing that for like a couple of years now. How's it working out for you? Uh, you know what? Tonight we're going out. I'm going to change around the tables. If anything comes up in a month or so, I'll give you a call. Let me know one way or the other. All right, then. All Thanks, right. Tom. Thank All you. Right. Appreciate the call. Here comes Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. Awesome. And guys like that, I don't think they're ever going to get it. It doesn't matter what you tell them. Um, but uh, I just needed a little bit of help getting back to my old self. Uh, quick little summary. I was with a chick for about three years. We lived together before I started listening to you. And um, we, uh, I just kicked her out about, uh, I guess, about six weeks, seven weeks ago. And... Um, and she's, I've done absolutely everything, made her physically, took her down to the post office, changed her address, absolutely, like, everything I can do except for, I blocked her number, everything, but she still sends me text messages, and I kind of, like, I would change the number that I have, but it's also my work phone number, and it's like, is there any other way that you can, that, I mean... I thought maybe last week I got rid of it because uh, somehow my phone messed up and some chick email, or, uh, text messaged me and I texted her back saying that I was going to come over and I'd get beer and uh, it was a, some random chick and she uh, and I'd get some beer on the way over and, and we'd hang out and somehow the text message went to my ex <laughs> and uh, she calls me up and and um was all pissed off and all that and that, I, I thought maybe that showing her like showing her that you know that because i didn't lie to her i told her yeah what, what look pal don't be a pussy don't an, don't answer the phone if she calls don't answer the door don't see her don't oh, do I don't, it I, i'm saying but the only thing that i can't block is text messages like yes there... you can talk to your cell phone provider there is a way to do it they make it complicated but if you call technical support at your phone company, whoever your cellular phone provider is, your wireless provider, uh, they will tell you how to block her text messages. Good luck. Thanks a lot for the call.